thank you welcome uh, again to these sessions of uh, chemistry simplified here we want to look at the uh, a common subject a common uh, topic here which is uh, structure and boarding in form 2 we want to simplify it we want to make it simple we want it to be easy to pass uh, in questions uh, coming from this topic let, let us get started. My name is Simple Teacher. We start by defining what a structure is, and these are pattern formed by arrangement of particles, that is, atoms and molecules. Once they arrange themselves in a certain pattern, they form a structure. In terms of boarding, these are combination of two atoms or more uh, to form molecules and compounds. When atoms combine, they do board so that's how you define boarding in terms of types of boardings we have about four types and we want to go through them one after the other let us start with ionic boarding or what is called electrophorent boarding in this uh, boarding one element loses and another one gains so there is losing and gaining of electrons it happens commonly when metals combine with nonmetals resulting in uh, a structure called giant ionic structure or giant electrophorent structure this created uh, through uh, strong electrostatic attractions between positive and negative charges yes you are aware when a metal loses electrons it becomes a positive ion and when an unmetal gains electrons it becomes a negative ion so in this case because there is gaining and losing there is a lot of attraction between the negatively charged and positively charged ions that are formed in the combination. So an example is sodium and chlorine. When they react together, they form a compound called sodium chloride, which uh, involves uh, the reaction involves gaining and losing of electrons. We draw the representation as um, described as showing here in the diagram. You can see initially uh, sodium had it uh, had uh, uh, 11 electrons and the two in the first energy level, uh, eight in the second energy level, and one in the third energy level. Chlorine, of course, has two eight seven in as its uh, electronic configuration, and the last uh, energy level has seven electrons. So what happens in the reaction? is that one o one the hanging electron in sodium the one that was alone out in the outer energy level is moves uh, to is lost to chlorine and it moves to the chlorine's uh, last uh, energy level that's why you can see the third energy level in chlorine here there is a dot dot like uh, electron that has come from uh, sodium now sodium has lost the outer energy level and it has only two energy levels so basically this is how you represent it in, in, in the grammatic form. So anytime you are told to draw and uh, illustrate uh, how the ionic board is formed between one element and another, this is uh, the diagram that you use. This is how you represent it diagrammatically. In terms of the properties of compounds formed from giantic uh, from uh, the ionic boarding, one is that they have a giant ionic structure. Of course it is formed due to electrostatic attractions between oppositely charged ions as we have described it is hard to break they are hard to break as in they have a high melting and boiling points number three they are solids number four is that they conduct electricity when molten remember when they are molten then they break into their ions and the ions are now mobile they become mobile when it is molten when it is in solid form the ions are not mobile and that's why it can't conduct electricity but when it is molten it is able to conduct electricity they are also soluble in water let us look at the second form of boarding which is covariant boarding in covariant boarding electrons are shared between elements it involves atoms of uh, non-metals uh, of the same element or different elements resulting in uh, and formation of compounds called a uh, covariant compounds or covariant elements for example elements is when there are no two different elements combining an example is um, what we are calling here a single covariant for chlorine 
here you know chlorine gas is represented by Cl2 that means there are two atoms of chlorine that combine to form that particular board so a board in chlorine gas is a coherent board and the single coherent because only one pair of electron is shared uh, diagrammatically you can see here I'm, I'm presenting uh, I'm just using the last uh, the outermost energy level for chlorine it has seven electrons and this other one it has also seven uh, electrons so what happens is that one electron from one atom and another electron from this other atom are combined and they are shared between the two so it is one pair one pair one electron coming from one side another coming from the other side so it is only one pair that is being shared and that's why it is called single coherent it is represented by cl dash cl so what happens is the compound symbol dash uh, and the other compound symbol you, you that's how you represent the single coherent board there is something called uh, there is also double coherent double coherent is that is when two pairs of electrons are shared e.g. in oxygen that has two six as the electronic configuration you find that um, the two electrons the two atoms each donates two electrons so that all of them will have eight eight at the end of the combination so one oxygen donates two electrons the other oxygen donates two electrons and therefore there are two pairs of electrons that are being shared it is normally represented by a double double line uh, double dashes uh, so you write oxygen double dash oxygen so that is double covariant triple covariant is when three pairs are being shared for example in nitrogen that has a uh, requires which requires um, which requires three electrons to be stable so what happens is that uh, uh, there are two nitrogens each uh, th 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 and then the, 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 uh, their share sharing is between is, is six electrons are being shared each one of them donating three so uh, giving out three so it's a triple covariant because there are three pairs that are being shared so in this one you use a triple dash or triple lines to represent the the board the the triple covariant board so what what kind of structures are formed in uh, covariant boarding one of them is what is called giant covariant structure giant covariant structure uh, happens when there are multiple atoms multiple atoms of uh, a nanometer that covariantly board indefinitely they board expansively it's not two or three uh, atoms it's multiple atoms that board uh, indefinitely that's when you find a formation of giant covariant structure it's common in graphite diamond and silicon for oxide for example in diamond each carbon atom remember diamond is uh, comprised of carbon atoms each carbon atom is joined to four other carbon atoms by strong covariant board and therefore no free uh, electrons are left all of them the four electrons in 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 in, in uh, carbon are joined to another four join uh, join other electrons from other carbon atoms from the multiple carbon atoms so each one of the electrons combines joins other electrons from that that, that are formed but that come from uh, different atoms in the entire structure so so this in diagrammatic representation this is how it looks like you notice like um, in this 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 atom here these are uh, electrons sorry it is joined to other electrons to other electrons to other electrons so that are coming from different atoms in the whole structure so so there are no free electrons each electron is joined to other electrons uh, in, in graphite which also forms the giant covariant structure each carbon atom uses three of its electrons to form a board with three of its closest numbers so every atom uses three to join to other atoms then there is one that remains that is delocalized it remains free over the whole structure over the whole sheet of atoms in a layer layers of hexagonal rings are formed then uh, each layers um, 
uh, each layers uh, th there are different layers that are formed which are then uh, interconnected but not through the covariant board so the structure that is formed of graphite is like this so there is always one electron that is left free delocalized then the, the other three are used to combine to other atoms in the structure so properties of covariant compound with giant covariant structure here we are talking of properties of things, the, the items like diamond, the elements, sorry, compounds like elements like um, diamond and graphite. One, they are solid, and diamond is very hard due to the strong covariant mode. Remember in diamond, as we have said, all the electrons combine with other electrons in the different atoms within the structure. They have a very high melting point and burning point due to strong covariant mode requiring a lot of energy to break. In terms of electricity conductivity, of course diamond cannot conduct because all the electrons are tightly held up between atoms. Graphite can, can conduct. This is because uh, there is one delocalized electron per atom that is left roaming and free within the structure. In terms of uh, solubility, they are insoluble in water and organic compounds. Now those are that is one of the structures that is formed in covariant building. The other structure is simple molecular structure. In this one, it is just a few atoms are he that are held together by covariant boots. Remember, in the giant covariant structure, we had multiple atoms that being joined together indefinitely. But here, it is just a few atoms that are joined together. For example, is carbon four oxide, where you have only one carbon item and uh, sorry atom and two oxygen atoms, and water, where you have two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom, or even hydrogen gas where you have two hydrogen atoms. So you can see from the diagrammatic representation here, uh, for example, in water, you have two hydrogen atoms and uh, one oxygen atoms, and then there is sharing of electrons. So that is a simple molecular structures. So properties of uh, covariant uh, compounds with simple molecular structure is that one, they have low melting point and boiling point because uh, they, they, they are just held by weak intermolecular forces that require very less energy to break. Number two is that they are liquid or gaseous in room te temperature due to weak intermolecular forces, so they, they are not very tightly held together, and that's why they are either gaseous or liquid. So intermolecular forces that hold them together uh, there are two types of uh, forces that hold uh, the atoms in simple molecular structure together and one of the forces is weak van der Waals forces for example in carbon dioxide or oxygen uh, or hydrogen board hydrogen board uh, holds together the atoms of water or e and ethan uh, for example so in hydrogen board is normally stronger than the weak van der Waals forces that uh, combine uh, atoms of uh, compounds such as carbon dioxide, and that explains why uh, water has a high boiling point as compared to carbon dioxide because it is held by hydrogen boards, while carbon dioxide is held by weak van der Waal, van der Waal forces. Uh, water is also a liquid. This also explains why water is, is a liquid and not gaseous. Because of course hydrogen board, as we said, is stronger than uh, weak van der Waals forces, and um, uh, of course in hydrogen has water and uh, has uh, water has hydrogen and oxygen, and as you know, hydrogen is positively charged and uh, oxygen is negatively charged. So there is that attraction between the negative charges of hydrogen of uh, oxygen and the positive charges of hydrogen which make water much more particles much more close to each other so making nearby molecules of water attracted to each other and that's why it becomes a liquid instead of being gaseous as you can see in the diagram the oxygen atoms it has oxygen atom and hydrogen atoms and hydrogen atoms get attracted to the oxygen at uh, atoms in the in the neighboring molecules so this makes them uh, much more tightly together and that's why they are 
they exist, uh, the water exists as, as a liquid. There's also something called surface tension that I thought it's good for you to know uh, in water. You'll find that water in the surface, if you put water in a container, water on the surface is harder than the water inside, uh, uh, inside the, the container. The water on the top of the surface is hard to break as compared to internally there inside uh, the, the container where water is held. This is because the water in the surface has fewer neighbor, neighboring molecules. Remember water is now formed of molecules and uh, you'll find that um, the water in the surface have fewer m water me molecules because uh, on top now it is air and uh, on top of it there is no water molecules and thereby the, the fewer molecules uh, next to each other attract each other very much eh? therefore they have a strong attraction to each other and uh, that makes it very hard to break because there is some strong attraction between the, the fewer water me molecules that are on the surface Therefore, it becomes difficult to break uh, uh, the surface of water as compared to navigating inside, inside the container, inside the water, uh, internally there. So now we look at the other form of boarding which we call coordinate or dative boarding. In this kind of boarding, uh, it's uh, just a form of covalent board, but the pair of electrons being shared come from the same atom. So it's not each atom producing uh, electrons to be shared, but one atom is the one that produces all the shared atoms. For example, in ammonia, ammonia is NH3, uh, the symbol, so it uh, has uh, hydrogen, uh, sorry, mm, ammonium, ammonium is NH4, it is formed through combining ammonia, which is NH3, and hydrogen. So in this kind of uh, formation, you find that um, there is one nitrogen and then there are three, three hydrogens in ammonia and the combination is, as you can see here, there is sharing of electrons where uh, nitrogen produces three electrons to be shared, uh, each one of the electrons being shared with hydrogen and it remains with two, with two, with two electrons. So you find that when the, the fourth hydrogen is added, it, is, it, it can only be connected to the remaining two, the remaining two electrons, and therefore all the electrons, the two electrons to be shared uh, in the board between that nitrogen and this fourth hydrogen will come from nitrogen. So here it's nitrogen that is uh, donating the electrons to be shared, therefore here it is uh, the kind of boarding form there is coordinate or dative boarding. So it is normally represented by, as yes, you can see here, the first hydrogen is a dative board, the second hydrogen is a dative board, the third hydrogen is a, uh, is, is a dative, is a, sorry, is a covalent board. So the first three hydrogens are uh, joined through covalent boarding. This one is covalent, covalent, and this one is covalent. But then this other one, where it's uh, the all the electrons shared are coming from nitrogen, it's represented by a narrow and a pointer at the edge. So the final boarding type of boarding is metallic boarding or metallic structure. Let us call it metallic metallic structure, which uh, is formed after metallic uh, atoms lose electrons. So after they lose electrons, they become positive ions because of having more protons than electrons as we discussed in the topic on atomic structure. So metallic structures are therefore composed of positive, positive ions packed together surrounded by free electrons. So as you are aware, they will lose electrons. So those electrons become free and therefore these uh, structures are formed of positive ions, multiple positive ions uh, combined together to, to and then the, uh, the free electrons surrounded by free electrons. Multiple attractions are now between the positive recharged ions and negative recharged delocalized electrons results in a very strong, in very strong giant metallic structure. So that is the structure of metals. As you can see in the diagram here, the, uh, the, the, the red, uh, the red uh, particles are the positive recharged ions 
and then you can see a lot of uh, delocalized electrons inside there. So properties of metallic structures, one, they conduct the heat and electricity due to the presence of delocalized electrons. Two, they have very high melting and boiling points due to strong metallic mode requiring a lot of energy to break. So that is all for that uh, topic on structure and boarding. We have made it as simple as it can be and we have simplified it very much and I'm very much sure that now you can be able to grasp uh, the main <coughs> points in that uh, particular topic and uh, you can be able even to tackle any questions that come in KCSE or any other exam. I have taken a sample of questions that have come in the KCSE over the last four years and uh, I want you to have a look at them then at the end of the day I want that when we are we tackled the majority of the topics we'll be able to come back and check on them so you can see in 2020 paper one there was a question on stating a difference we are told to state a difference between covalent board and dative covalent using dot and cross to represent the electrons drew a diagram to show the boarding in ammonia which we have just covered then using the diagram b be the grammar state one property that makes ammonia react with hydrogen ion so so many questions here there is another one in 2021 paper two you can have a look uh, you can also have a look at this one of uh, paper one in 2019 and uh, 20 paper, 20, uh, paper one paper two in 2022 so you'll go through those and then from there we can see there is another one in 2022 paper one have a look at all of them and then we will have a look at all of them when we are through with the majority of the topics thank you very much i think i believe we are doing well and uh, we have simplified this topic in a very few minutes 